All right, FAQ number 31. Does dispensationalism teach different ways to be saved? And the second part of that question is, uh, isn't there always an aspect of faith and grace in any dispensation? Well, let's go over this, okay? First dispensation that you would have, I do teach that there are seven dispensations. I'll just go over them very quickly. The Garden of Eden. Then you have after the Garden of Eden there, be before the giving of the law, under the law, uh, the time of, of the Bible talks about the law and the prophets are until John, you know, the Baptist. And since that time, the kingdom of heaven is preached and every man presseth into it. So you have that. Then you have the what we would call the church age, where we are now at. Then after that, you have the time of Jacob's trouble. Then you have the millennial kingdom and then you have eternity. Okay, so that's what I teach. I teach that there are seven dispensations. Okay, so let's start out with the first one. What was the plan of salvation in the Garden of Eden? What was the only thing that they had to do to be saved? Well, don't eat of the knowledge, or don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which would be works. Now, does God have grace in that time period? Well, God has, I would imagine, some measure of grace, but the fact of the matter is, when they ate of that tree, He didn't say, well, you know, you're eternally secure, you're sealed until the day of redemption, so forget about it, don't worry about it. You know, I'm just going to have to punish you or whatever, you know, punish you according to the flesh. Or No, they got kicked out of the, the Garden of Eden. The dispensation ended. So um, God doesn't have the same level of grace there. You say, what about faith? Well, they had to somewhat believe in God and things, uh, but there was no faith in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ had not come to the earth to die on the cross yet. So again, you, you can't really compare the Garden of Eden to today. Um you know, and you can really, you really have to strain here and really kind of try to get faith and grace into the Garden of Eden. Uh, salvation in that time period would have been works. And we're going to see why that's important later on when we get to the last, the seventh dispensation. What about after the Garden of Eden? You know, the time before you have the giving of the law to Moses. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those guys back then. What were they living under? Noah as well, you know. What were those guys living under? Well, uh, the Bible talks about, um, let me just look this, this verse up here. This is where a lot of confusion comes in. Let me just look it up real quick. I'll be right back with you. All right, we're here in Romans chapter 4, verse 6. It talks about, uh, David also describeth uh, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So people would say, well, see, he was justified the same way. No, God uh, imputed righteousness to David. He didn't, I mean, David should have been executed for what he did, committing adul adultery under the Old Testament law. He should have been executed for that. But God had special grace for him as a, a pre-type of what the body of Christ would have, would have or was going to have. Um, David had a special relationship with God that most people in the Old Testament did not have. Um, so that's, again, you can't say that, you know, it was faith that he had or something. Look forward to the cross or some kind of nonsense like this. Uh, I have a whole sermon on that. Um, they weren't saved by looking forward to the cross. That's a lie. But then it goes into talking about Abraham. Uh, verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon the, the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. And it goes down through there. Um, verse 13, we'll jump down to that. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So you'll see this thing of, of faith and Abraham. Okay? But let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. You say, was, was Abraham justified by faith? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 the infamous faith chapter there in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a uh, strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, so it goes on there. Um, that is, did it say that his faith was in Jesus Christ? The blood of Jesus Christ that, that Jesus shed on the cross? No, no. 
he had to have faith. God said, hey, I'm going to make this promise to you, to you and to your descendants, that you're going to obtain a piece of land. So he had faith that God was going to fulfill that promise. It's not the same kind of faith that we have today. Now, many things will line up. Many things uh, will line up when you, when you have that, that period between the Garden of Eden and the giving of the law. There are many rules and things that are in there that apply very much to, uh, to today in, in this church age. But obviously, under the law that was given to Moses, you have a priesthood, the, the tribe of the Levites, and you have animal sacrifices being done there to, to uh, um, cover sins and things like this. They weren't paid for until Jesus died on the cross. That's why the Old Testament saints went down into Abraham's bosom, this place down below us here, you know, it was a, if you read uh, there in the, in the book of Luke, you can see about the rich man in hell and Lazarus being in Abraham's bosom, and the rich man can look over and see him, okay? So there was a place where the Old Testament saints had to go. They couldn't go right to heaven when they died. That wasn't available until Jesus Christ died on the cross. So, was, you know, right division is, is it's not an option, when you are a Bible-believing Christian. You have to rightly divide these things. You can't just say everything applies to us. I mean, it, it, when you say that, when somebody says I'm non-dispensational, you're either dealing with somebody who's completely ignorant and has no right to be in ministry, or you're dealing with a minister of Satan. And quite often it's ministers of Satan that you're dealing with. But to say that the faith that Abraham had was not it was the same kind of faith that we have today, uh, that just does, does not work. Turn next to James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father uh, justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with work, his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Of course, uh, James chapter 2, a lot of people get mixed up on that because they're saying, well, see, it's faith and works. You get the Catholics, they'll quote that one a lot. It's faith and works. You, you know, faith without works is dead, being alone. Well, this is pointed to the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes show up in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, the Jacob being Israel. You know, so again, you know, people are not like, rightly dividing the word of truth here. But you read that passage right there, it's saying that there was an element of works involved in, it wasn't just faith, it was also works involved with Abraham there. Okay, so yes, he had to have faith that God was going to give him the land, but God also asked him to do something. You know, sacrifice his own son. And of course, God stepped in and stopped the whole thing. Again, God was trying to show people in the future that God himself was going to provide the lamb for the sacrifice. The lamb being Jesus Christ, God's son. God was going to put his own son, Jesus Christ, on the altar, you know, the cross, to pay for our sins. So that was what was going on there.